So what exactly happens once a cytotoxic T cell is activated? Uh, if you remember, we said it gets activated when antigen is presented to it by an antigen-presenting cell, such as a dendritic cell, uh, uh, being held onto and displayed on major histocompatibility complex proteins, MHC proteins. But it can only respond to that antigen, number one, if its T cell receptor recognizes it, and number two, if um, cytokines from a helper T cell are present. That means that helper T cell had to have been activated as well. And all this has to take place in the same location, such as in a lymph node. Once it is activated, and you've got this sort of double confirmation, then clonal expansion takes place. The activated cytotoxic T cell with its unique T cell receptor undergoes several rounds of mitosis. So we can increase our army temporarily against this particular pathogen. Differentiation also takes place. Most of these cytotoxic T cells will be effector cytotoxic T cells that will get involved in the current battle and have a short lifespan of a few weeks to a few months at the most. But a small pool of them will differentiate into memory cytotoxic T cells that won't get involved in the current battle, but will stick around for future infections. And it's those, those memory T cells and memory B cells that help us to fight off these future exposures. They're really at the heart of vaccination as well, if we think about that. So when you read about vaccination, keep that in mind. <clears throat> and then finally, migration. This is unique to the cytotoxic T cells. The helper T cells stay put right where they are, and they secrete their cytokines and essentially chemically talk to it. The cytotoxic T cells, though, their job is to go find the infection and kill infected host cells, your cells that have pathogen inside them. So they have to leave. So they're going to migrate, the effector pool will migrate away from the lymph system, away from the lymphoid organs and the lymph nodes, and they'll migrate to the site of the infection using chemotaxis and following uh, gradients until they find that, that particular location. Now what happens when they get there? Let's talk about this. Okay, so the cytotoxic T cells directly attack infected host cells, and they do this by punching holes in the membrane, and that's going to cause the cell to explode. It requires antigen being presented again. Now, these aren't antigen-presenting cells. Maybe these are your nasal epithelial mucous membrane cells, right? And they're not professional antigen-presenting cells like dendritic cells or potentially neutrophils and macrophages. These are just regular old epithelial cells minding their own business. But all of your cells, with the exception, I believe, of your red blood cells, can present antigen as a cry for help as a way of saying, oh no, I've been infected, look what's inside me. So imagine this is an epithelial, nasal epithelial, uh, mucous membrane type cell, and it's infected with rhinoviruses. So that's what the little sunshine looking things are supposed to be. While they're being produced during the biosynthesis stage, before you get maturation and lysis of the cell, this cell, if it still has its wits about it, so to speak, is gonna be taking MHC molecules and trying to put bits and pieces of all these viruses on their surface, the surface of that cell, on MHC, saying, help, this is what's inside me. Now, all of your cells are going to have MHC on the surface, and they're going to be displaying antigens all the time, even when you're not sick, which means that the majority of your cells are going to be displaying antigens that are just simply self-antigens. These cytotoxic T cells have to ignore all of them, and they'll be able to ignore them because their T cell receptor is specific to whatever non-self antigen stimulated their activation in the first place. So they're searching for your cells, host cells, that are displaying the exact same antigen that activated them in the first place. So here they're, they're uh, displaying some antigen on MHC, it's a cry for help. The cytotoxic T cell, it will eventually, oh come on now, the cytotoxic T cell will eventually <clears throat> find these antigens being displayed on MHC on the surface of the infected cells. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to secrete something, aren't they? They're going to secrete two types of proteins. We call them perforins and gramzymes. Perforins perforate the membrane. They punch holes in the membrane. Gramzymes diffuse in through those holes and stimulate apoptosis, right, which is a cell suicide, programmed cell death. And so the result, kaboom, the cell is going to lice. Now, if this takes place too late, 
and bios and uh, maturation assembly has already begun. When you explode it, you're going to have a bunch of variants coming out, intact infectious particles. But at least they're exposed, and then the B cell response can get involved. But if you can, if your T cells, cytotoxic T cells, can get there early enough and explode it during biosynthesis, when they haven't assembled yet, it's just a bunch of bits and pieces and parts that'll drift out before they've assembled, and that'll be the end of it. No infectious particles will be involved. So that is the cytotoxic T cell response after it's been activated. That's how the, the cell-mediated immunity seeks out and destroys host cells that have been infected. Again, a lot to think about, so work your way through it multiple times until it's starting to make some sense to you.